This is the Pubimanto booth in Ghana's capital, Accra. It used to be a major revenue cashing point for the government and served as Linda's office. Millions of Ghana cities were generated here annually until the cessation of road and bridge toll collection in November 2021. Linda woke up one day and her life had changed. The finance minister Ken Oforiata read the 2022 budget and put her out of her job with an assurance that all toll booth workers will continue to receive monthly salaries while they await reassignment. To address these challenges, the government has abolished all tolls on public roads and bridges. This takes effect immediately if the budget is approved on appropriation. The toll collection pers personnel the toll collection personnel will be reassigned, the expected impact on productivity and reduced environmental pollution will more than offset the revenue foregone by removing the tolls. So far, that promise has not been fulfilled. The decision to halt the operation of the toll booth has placed a heavy burden on Linda. She says the current economic downturn is slowly squeezing the life out of her. She cannot pay for accommodation any longer and is currently facing eviction. To fend for her seven children, Linda now begs for money. If it is if you run or buy, and you buy, who send me a German? No, sister, son, it's a dear. Men name a man, Yembra, a dying wing. And see, now my money be big a crank a cra. It's a cardia on jet, but a toda, a monk a cra, or you get to an obacon, now or baha, no media man. And see me waha, and now buy, we catch them say, mean free, a dying no de neba. Me <laughs> Let me drink the coma by the run and I am moving and send a bay ya or by some mummy be. Let me dear be going to buy any dear. I wonder who in a candy a cry to me no near the inch up from Naja. Yet a chance are not yet. Linda says all attempts to get reassigned have failed after registering with the Gan North District Assembly. My co register or Gan North in Tidano or Mobaha. It may be some second in a meeting here. And I make a chain and say, See, ah, dear. You're more debbie, mummy, be a more debbie, mummy, be a patient's latte is in the same predicament. She, also a former toll booth employee. Is a matter of two. She describes how hardship forces her to sleep on an empty stomach when all attempts to reach out to family and friends for help are futile. The last salary she received in December 2021 couldn't sustain her for more than a month because of the high cost of living. She is disappointed that government had failed to keep its promise of paying them indefinitely while they waited for reassignment. Sometimes. I just sleep. I sleep without food. Patient says financial hardship 
has forced her to change her children's school. This is because she was unable to pay the previous school fees. Her mother and other siblings who depended on her have had to find their own means of surviving. I have to take them off from that school, put them in, in different schools where even I can't afford their daily, daily uh, feeding fee, school fees, books, everything, I can't. Since last term, up this time that school resumed, nothing has been done about their school. They are just going there, just like that. When I was working, my mother used to depend on me, even my siblings. But now that I'm not doing anything, they told they don't have, they are small ones. So nobody is there. Her grandmother described the situation as pitiful and called on government to restore the toll booth work. The story of Linda AJ and Patience Lati reflects those of hundreds of toll booth workers who lost their jobs. All they wish is for government to listen to their plea. If not, the future of their children now hangs in the balance. Franklin Ansong Siam's story on the impact of the cessation of road and brittle collection on livelihood. We are privy, toll workers are privy to the government. It should reassign us. As we are home, we have to eat before we survive to wait for our reassignment.